First, the headlines. Go to Village 2.0 launch at Thaubal Moising. It's not a political gimmick, but a mission to serve people, says Chief Minister N. Birin. New office bearers of JCILPS elected, BK Moirangcha takes over as convener. Paumi Welfare Foundation issues final call for application for medical financial assistance scheme from retired and present members of AMZU. Hello and a very good evening. You're watching the Mummy TV English News Bulletin. I'm Albina Riamai. Go to Village is not a political gimmick but a mission to directly serve the people. This was stated by Chief Minister Anne Burain during the launching program of Go to Village 2.0 organized by People's Forum Moising under the auspices of District Administration Taubal at Moising Public Ground today. The program is scheduled to be held for three days in Taubal District on November 2, 3 and 5. Speaking on the occasion, Chief Minister Biren said, it's the duty of the government to ensure that standard of living of the people is improved without much problem. The number of youth of the rural areas who apply for a startup scheme is very less, Biren said. Youth must avail of the benefits of the startup scheme and compete among each other in giving self-employment. He also exhorted the youth to set up by a flock to rear fees and earn money. Ministers, MLAs and heads of various government departments attended the launching program. Stalls of different departments were opened to provide opportunities to the local residents during the program. Joint Committee on Inner Line Permit System, JCILPS, has appointed its office bearers for the term 2021 to 2023 at its office located at Kaishampat Sega Road, Konjeng Hazari Lekai, on Monday. Co convener of JCILPS, Luang Cha Chinkai, informed in a press release that BK Moirang Cha of IPSA has been appointed as the convener of JCILPS, Luang Cha Chinkai of IPSA as the co convener, finance. Thiam Sarachandra of Amipko as the co-convener organization, Warepam Second of UPF as the co-convener publicity, Haupu Kom as the co-convener community affairs, and Mohammad Khairuddin MM as the co-convener minority affairs of the committee. Mm -hmm. 
Palmi Welfare Foundation, PWF, a foundation formed by journalists to extend financial help to journalists who are suffering from one or other illness for treatment, has issued its final call for applications from bona fide past and present primary members of the All Manipur Working Journalists Union, AMZU, to avail of the Phase 1 of the Medical Financial Assistance, MFA, scheme for the year 2021-2022, to eligible for medical treatment expenses incurred between April 1 and September 30, 2021. The assistance to the beneficiaries is due for distribution in November 2021. Applicants must submit their prescribed application form along with supporting documents at the Manipur Press Club reception by November 10 this year. The foundation has been offering one-time medical financial assistance to retired and present members since 2017. Trap camera placed at Quilong Part 2 of Tamay Subdivision and the Tamanglong District in July this year has captured the photos of some rare wild animals. These cameras were placed by the Forest Department to detect the presence of tiger in the area. The camera captured the photos of Himalayan black bear, yellow trotted marten, samba deer, barking deer and wild boar. However, the trap camera did not capture any photos of Royal Bengal tiger. To commemorate the 106th birth anniversary of Thaunaujam Iboyaima, known as the father of social worker of Manipur, Irabot Foundation Manipur, distributed blankets, socks, masks and hand sanitizers to the inmates of all-age home at Mongsangai. Consultant of Irabot Foundation Manipur K. Gunachandra Sharma, Secretary General K. H. Gopen Luang and President T. H. Azit attended the distribution program. Speaking on the occasion, leaders of the foundation appealed to the all-age homes, orphanage and children homes in the state to conduct regular medical checkup for the inmates. Deputy Chief Minister of Manipur, Y. Joy Kumar, provided 90 shoeing machines to three clusters of common facility centre in Bisnupur. The shoeing machines were distributed by Livelihood and Enterprise Development Programme, LEDP, under the sponsorship of National Bank for Agriculture and Rural Development, NABAT. He also inaugurated a common facility centre at Kokilabon Mamang Lekai. 30 shoeing machines were distributed to each cluster of Kokilabon, Ngangkalekai and Pubala cluster. This is the third distribution of the machines by PDS in the state. Earlier, the machines were distributed at two places in Imphal East. Speaking on the occasion, he said, common facility center has become important these days. Earlier, every household had handlooms and spinning wheels to contribute to the economy of the family. He expressed happiness for setting up such centers at every locality to bring a change in the economy. Manipuri Students Federation, MSF, Jiribam District Committee held its general body meeting at the office of MSF, Jiribam District Committee. President of the committee, Atom Rajiv Mite, advisor, vice president, joint secretary, secretary organization and its members attended the meeting. Office bearers for the term of 2021 to 2022 for MSF, Jiribam District Committee were appointed during the meeting. Secretary organization, Sundar Kuman, informed that the committee will keep on pressing the department concerned of underdeveloped schools of Juribam district for better development under Aikoi Lerik Ningtina Tamsi mission. Ratan Singh has been appointed as the president, T. H. Samanan Singh, Sabir Ahmad, Bharat Thiam, R. K. Sophia and A. D. B. I. as the vice president, O. Johnson as general secretary and S. Iranganba as finance secretary.
NPP's aspiring candidate from Moirang Assembly constituency, Thongam Shanti, has handed over a shoeing machine to Hemam Roji, age 21, of Moirang Konjengbam Maning Lekai. She has been staying with her grandmother and aunt since her parents died. Speaking on the occasion, Shanti said he, along with Moirang Kendra Progressive Front, MKPF, has been extending help to the underprivileged people of Moirang AC. He expressed sadness over the condition of Roji, who is pursuing BA third semester. She is currently taking care of her grandmother and aunt, who is a heart patient. ไม่ดูสาระเลยอยู่แล้วก็มาอีมาบ่งสมานีบมานะท่าละเลยมาเชคคุยเรื่องเทวีเจ้าบุญอดีตเลยคุยว่าเขาเลยคุยปันดับไ
Prime Minister Narendra Modi called climate change a huge threat and said the past few decades have proven that nobody has remained untouched by it. Speaking at launch of infrastructure for resilient island states, he said the past few decades have proven that nobody remains untouched by the effects of climate change be it developed nations or nations that are rich in natural resources. It's a huge threat. The launch of infrastructure for resilient island states fills us with new hope and beliefs. This gives us the satisfaction to do something for the most vulnerable nations, he added. As Trinamul Congress candidates took a massive lead in all four Bengal Assembly bipolar seats today, party supremo Mamata Banerjee held it as the people's victory and also took a swipe at rival BJP. Taking to Twitter, the West Bengal Chief Minister said she congratulated to all the four winning candidates and added that this victory is people's victory as it shows how Bengal will always choose development and unity over propaganda and hate politics. With people's blessings, uh, she promised to continue taking Bengal to greater heights. The BJP and its ally, the UPPL, have resisted an emphatic win in the Assam by elections. The BJP and its allies have won all the five seats that went to by elections in Assam. Jiron Basumatri, the UPPL candidate from Gosaingaon seat, has won the by election. Basumatri defeated his closest rival Congress, Joel Tudu, by a margin of 28,252 votes. BTC Chief Pramod Boro led UPPL is BJP's ally in the state of Assam. BJP's Shushanta Borgohant has won the Thora Assembly seat with a margin of 30,561 votes. Afghanistan's capital was hit by two blasts near a military hospital today, Taliban officials said, with a witness also reporting gunfire. A health worker at the hospital who managed to escape the site said he heard a large explosion followed by a couple of minutes of gunfire. About 10 minutes later, there was a second larger explosion, he said. He said it was unclear whether the blast and the gunfire were inside the sprawling hospital complex, the largest military hospital in Afghanistan. A Taliban media spokesman confirmed both explosions that one explosion has happened at the gate of the military hospital and second somewhere near the hospital. Kari Said Kosti, a spokesman for the Interior Ministry, said Taliban special forces have reached the area. Before we end the bulletin, let's look at the top news headlines once again. Go to Village 2.0 launch at Thaubal Moising. It's not a political gimmick but a mission to serve people, says Chief Minister N. Birin. New office bearers of JCILPS elected BK Moirangja takes over as convener. Palmi Welfare Foundation issues final call for application for medical financial assistance scheme from retired and present members of AMZU. With that, it's a wrap for this evening news bulletin. Thank you for joining us. Have a great evening.